Hey guys, <clears throat> NJ Tiger here, back with another video. Been a while since I talked to you guys, gave you a video, an update of all my stuff going on. So I'm gonna take this one, show you guys my tanks, show you my controller, give you a, a good update on everything. So I did get asked one time to give a little more detail about my controller. So let me first go into that. As most of you may know, I am building a controller for my aquarium. <clears throat> so the idea, pardon me, the idea is to, I'm taking a Raspberry Pi, I'm taking controllers and stuff like that, power outlets and all that stuff, and they're all going to be controlled by my Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi B+. Plus. So it's one of the older models. It's not the Pi 3, it's not the Pi 2, it's a B plus right now, but it's doing the job. So enough about that. Uh, if you saw my last video, <clears throat> you saw I got the temperature sensor plugged in. I was pulling temperature. I uh, actually maybe not even showing you guys that. It's been a while. So Really, I do have a temperature probe. Um, now, I picked it up. It was very easy to wire it up. So, now that's in my tank. It sends every minute my system pulls to the temperature. And it logs it into a file. So, and that file has three variables. It has the current temp for that one minute when the pull. It has a maximum temp and a minimal temp. Now the maximum and the minimal temps are only for the current day. So from 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. Um, so I, I know that day what my minimum temperature is and my maximum temperature is. And then I have another file that actually logs on the hour every hour the temperature into a database so I can actually pull up every hour that since I've been running this and see what my temperature was on the hour that gives me a long-term graph history of my temperature yes it's not every second it's I, I, I don't think I need to pull every second to monitor every second of my temperature um, like I said Display I see updates every minute and then I log every hour uh, Another feature going on with the temperature I added was now that I have the sensor I was debating on either just having it send me email alerts or Just sending me push notifications to my phone or both after some discussion I Someone pointed me to a very quick setup for a push notification. I already had the email set up, so I was like, I'll, I'll continue with the email. Uh, but he sent me a, a very quick setup for a push notification. So I tried it out, and it works great. So I'm using push bullet. Uh, so what that does is actually, when my temperature gets too low, or it gets too high, It'll actually trigger and send me a notification to my phone plus an email. So I get an email and I get a push notification on my phone. So let me actually show you guys that right now. Because um, I'm in not an issue, but I do have a low temp right now. And that's because it's early morning. I have my windows open. It's cool out. I'll get into that in um, a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in to my settings here. All right. And now if we sit and wait. Within one minute, I should receive a push notification from push bullet saying my temperature is too low. Let me just verify my temperature is still under my 
stressful it is so just gotta wait for it to run the script there we go as you can see there low temp show you again so low temps and it actually shows me my temperature which is 74.1 I also will receive an email that might be a little delayed we know how emails can be so let me uh, go back to what I was talking about is uh, it's now getting to be nicer out in New Jersey so I actually have my windows open I don't have my windows shut and stuff so I'm allowing fresh air in and temperature here has been like yesterday it was it got up to like 80 degrees um, been very nice me and my family like it cold as is anyway so even with the temperature dropping which I think right now it's uh, it's about 40 degrees outside up oh, there's my email alert so but it's about 40 degrees outside and with all my windows open it dropped my temperature down to 74 my alarm I set is I set my temperatures between 75 and 70 or er, in 80 so I have a 5 degree range 74 I, I don't think it's horrible but it's not where I want to be I don't think it's going to kill especially being um, there for a while I don't think it's going to be there long um, looking at my graph, it didn't drop down to 74 until about 4 a.m. And so about four hours it's been down to about 74. And I'm sure it's going to start rising. As now people are moving around in my apartment. I'm running the washer and dryer. And days get warmer. But to safeguard against this is I'm actually going to look into buying a second heater and what this heater's job is going to be is only to when it drops this low drops under my 75 so I'll actually plug this into my controller and have it where once my system reads that it's under 75 it'll kick on that heater as a secondary heater and then once my system reads that it gets to a mid-range temperature it'll turn that heater off and keep it off um, this way I'm not running two heaters all the time because really I don't need to I keep my apartment around a steady temperature except for in the spring and fall where I get the windows open and the environment changes during the summer I got my AC running during the winter, I got the window shut. I don't really run my heat. I just run, keep my window shut. So that controls the temperature in my apartment. But during spring and fall, nice weather, I do have my windows open, which it's harder to maintain a steady temperature, which might make my heater work overtime. I do have a 300 watt heater in there. And for the most part, it does a great job. So that's my plan. I do want to take suggestions from you guys. What kind of heater should I look to add? Right now, I have a Phoenix 300 watt titanium heater, and that's my primary heater. I heard great things about them. They're a little expensive, but I've heard good things about them. The other, my secondary heater, I don't think I want to go with a Phoenix, and it's not the, because I don't like the Phoenix. It's because, like I said, it's going to be a secondary heater. Uh, so, I don't know if I want to look at one of those small cobalt heaters. I've heard some good things, some bad things about them. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm i looking for suggestions. I'm going to do some research on my own, try to pick up something. But I'm looking for suggestions from you guys. Let me know what you use and what you think might be a good heater. Now, just to let you know my requirements. My requirements is it must fit inside my sump completely under the water. Um, because I don't want a glass tube. I don't want to run the risk of the water getting too low and that heater being on. 
to say for any kind of malfunction and that here being on and blowing the tube I do not want that that's why I kind of like the titanium Phoenix where it sits under the water completely um, so I might look at the cobalt I believe there's completely submergible as well but I want to stay away from the glass tubes I might go for a vertical one but I kind of like the ones that lay down on the bottom like like I did with my Phoenix it's on the bottom and then my skimmer is kind of in one side and then my GFO carbon pump is on the other side of the uh, heater and it's caddy corner across so that's another um, constraint I have is my sump is tight it's a one of those um, e-shops uh, real small sumps <coughs> pardon me guys but it it's doing a great job doing its, what it needs to do and it fits in my sand which I have a corner sand but going back to my temperature so what I'm also going to do is I have told you guys I get the low alarm I do have a high range of 80 and I'm going to connect my both my heaters like I said the one that I'm going to use only when it's probably under 75 I think the range on that one I'll put has to be between 75 and let's say 76 because like I said I don't want that one on all the time so really what I'll do is once it drops below 75 it'll kick on get the temperature up to about 76 and then that power outlet will just be off and I won't worry about that heater anymore until it drops back below 75 and then my high arms so what I figured with both heaters connected to my system I'll have it where once it reach above 80 then my main heater just kicks off and this should, that outlet that's plugged in just kicks off this should help prevent any um, malfunction on my heater so like if the internal thermometer doesn't kick it off this system should be a safeguard to kick it off. Now I do plan on putting other safeguards like some safeguards I'm looking to put into my system is water level detection so one, if my sump gets too low it'll kill everything. <coughs> uh, if water gets on the floor it'll kill everything stuff like that. There's That's what I'm looking to. Next time I'd say I'm going to be purchasing for the controller alone is a pH Pro. And I'll probably mimic what I did with Temperature Pro with the pH Pro, where I block, uh, pull every minute and then log in a database every hour my pH so I can watch my pH. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. I've been rambling on mainly about the controller and the temperature sensor and the alerts. So let me show you guys what I got so far. I'm not going to show you the monitor. I realized my last video didn't really show up on the screen so it's kind of pointless. So let me show you what I have. I'll show you for the computer and I mimic what I have on the display on the monitor on the computer so it's same stuff. And then later on I'll come back and I'll give you guys an update of my tanks when the lights are on and I'll talk to you a little bit about my tanks before I give you a tour on them as well but first off go on to the web page so this is the web page right here this box from where it, probably hard to see but I highlight it that area is what's display on my monitor over by my controller I have right now storage space left on my memory card so I can see how much storage I'm using I got plenty of room left so I'm not too concerned about that and then as I say here's my current temp it's right now 74.2 so far today my maximum temperature has been 76.2 my minimum temperature has been 74.1 so I'm back up on the rise so here's my 24 hour graph it's about 8 a.m. right now or 8.30 a.m. 
So from 8 a.m. Uh, yesterday, it was 78 in my tank. And it was around 77, 78 until about 1500. And then we started dropping, dropping. And then about 2100, we got down to 76. And then per, around midnight, I got around 75. And then, like I say, it's 4 o'clock in the morning. It dropped down to about, it dropped down to 74.9, and then it's dropped down to 74.1, and it's back up, heading back up. Hopefully, it's right now in that 74 range. And like I said, I'm not scrambling, going to throw a heater in there. I do think it's all right. I think my equipment, my fish, and my corals be all right for this time frame up today. I'm also doing a water change, uh, so I've got w new water getting ready, getting up to temperature to go into the tank. That'll help stabilize the temperature. Uh, w uh, another thing I did was I talked about doing is I did away with the lib chart graphs. Now, this is graphing stuff is a little slower than the lib chart, but it uses less storage and a little more fine detail I can uh, really manipulate it a little better so it does like I said take a little longer to load but the graphs I think are nicer I have a little more control over them and they take up less storage on my, my card and like you see I haven't done any logging today but my pH it looks like it's a wide range, but my scale is actually 7.9 to 8.2. So the highest is 8.2, the lowest 7.9 range for pH. Uh, my ammonia, as you can see, has been level. Nitrites level, nitrates are coming down. My calcium is kind of steady. It's bounced up and down. Um, my AKH is low, it's starting to come back up. Magne uh, phosphates, is, it's about level. It, there, I did have some peaks. My magnesium, I had a one big drop. But other than that, it's very in range. So, guys, that's my controller update. There's not much I'm, else I've done to that. Like I said, I do get the text alerts. I can go ahead and change the values and that was really the big thing I worked on now going to my tanks like I said later on when the lights are on and I'm done doing my uh, maintenance I'll show you vid video of my tank probably do it like I did before where I put the camera in the tank and just let the fish swim around so but uh, I do have a new addition to my 54 gallon reef tank I have a tomato clown um, I've been looking at a way to get uh, one of my clowns to host my anemone, or sorry, my anemone hosts the clown, and they just weren't taken to it. I wasn't going to try to force them together, I wasn't going to, and I'm not saying anything wrong with that, it just wasn't my method. I didn't want to take a strainer or something like that and force the anemone and the, my clowns to uh, pair up. I wanted them to do it naturally and it just wasn't happening. So I was looking at other clowns that are known to take to uh, anemones quicker, almost out of the gate type deal. And I've noticed my bubble tip was moving around a lot. So I was waiting. I was like, I'll wait until he finds his spot. Well, for a couple months now, he has been steady in this spot. I don't think he's moving. I think he picked his spot. He likes it now. So, the other day, while I was at my local fish store, I saw a tomato clown. They also had some maroon clowns and stuff, but I like the tomato. And they had some in a tank with anemones that were already paired up. But I didn't want another bubble tip anemone. I do want another anemone. I'm looking at a couple of other ones, but I just didn't want another bubble tip. I want to get a different one in there. Um, I'm not quite sure what 
other type of Nemi I want, but I'm gonna wait on that right now. So I didn't want to pick one that's already paired up with a Nemi. But he did have a couple other tomatoes just in a regular tank. No Nemis. And uh so I picked one up, looked healthy, been watching it for a couple days and stuff. So I brought him back. I acclimated him, got him used to the salini and the temperature, all that fun stuff. You guys know how to do that. So my hope was, alright, within a week I, I hope he takes to this bubble tip. Well, I put him in the tank and he darted right for it. The first thing he did was go right into that bubble tip. So I finally got what I wanted with this tank. And it's nice. Now, <clears throat> I do know I'm a heavy stock tank. I will not lie about that. And I do not suggest anyone to stock their tank as heavy as I have my tank. So, you trolls out there, bullies out there, whatever. I already know my tank's stock. I am not putting any more fish in my tank. Um, I am, like I said, do I know I'm a little over? I really probably shouldn't have some of these, but I am monitoring my fish every day. I check to make sure they're healthy, check to make sure they're growing, and as long as that's happening, I'm gonna continue to keep them like this. Like I said, I'm not gonna go out and buy any more fish and put it in there. I do want more fish. There's a lot of different saltwater fish I want. So I have an idea in my head of how to accomplish all the type of fish I want. So there are predator fish I want, like I would love a lionfish, but I really can't put that in my tank with my uh, snails and my shrimp and some of my other fish. Um, I would love a trigger fish. I would love different kind of tangs. And, uh, there's like the sailfin tang and the scorpion tang and the uh, NASA tang I think it is and there's so many tangs out there that are beautiful uh, some hawk fish and uh, a, a puffer like there's a lot of different fish I would love to put in my tank but I know they won't go into a 54 gallon tank so I have an idea in my head and when I get a house I hope I can continue with my plan to uh, get my dream system, I'll call it. I won't even call it a dream tank, but my dream system. But that's another sort. Uh, my tropical tank, still going strong. I really don't do much of that. That really just has a six platies in it. I do buy a week of water change, and that's really it on that tank. And I just let it go. So, guys, thank you comment like subscribe and like i said once the lights come on i'll <coughs> pardon, i'll put uh some footage of inside the tanks to show you both of my tanks how they're coming along thank you guys have a good one